Hello all, how are you doing today? It is another gorgeous day here in Michigan and I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. It is another hot one. I have no idea how y'all in the south can stand these temperatures on a regular basis. We're in Michigan and it is 90 degrees and it's just really hot. But thinking about summer, just kind of a little squirrel moment here. What is your favorite ice cream place in Grand Rapids? I would love to know. Comment below or make a comment on this video. We are going on an ice cream tour of the Grand Rapids area and into Holland. Uh, we did this a couple years ago, but we love every Friday going to a new ice cream place and enjoying all the fun flavors. I know one of my favorites um, that I'm looking forward to is I love um, Love's Ice Cream <laughs> in downtown Market. That's one of my very favorites. But what is your favorite? I would love to read your comments below. But enough of that distraction. We are here today to talk about kids' bathrooms. This is one place. And it looks like my internet is a little slow. Hopefully it goes through. This is the one place in the house um, that is just not fun to go into. That is usually pretty disgusting and gross because we think our kids are going to do the cleaning and be amazingly clean people. And they never are, right? But we're going to talk about those tips on how to create an inspiring and uh more cleanly bathroom for your kids. But to get started, I'm Becky Bennell. If I haven't met you, then I'm owner of Luca Haven Design, which is a purpose-driven interior design company in Grand Rapids and West Michigan. And we create with intention, mission, and connection. And so what we're really all about intention is the biggest thing. And how do we do that? We start where, I'm going to tell you to start with your kid's bathroom. We really start with an empathy exercise to understand the kind of feelings that we want to have in the space, what we're going to use this space for, and really dive into what are our intents for the space. And from that, you develop your intention statement and then images that bring that intention to life through a mood board. So these images aren't necessarily things that you'll implement, but they're really just pictures to bring those words into more graphical representation. So that's where we start with the kids' bathrooms as well. And once you do that, then you can understand from these tips I'm going to give you, which ones make the most sense for your family. Um, and so we're going to dive into those right, right now. So what are those top tips? The first tip I have is to make it fun. So this is a place that is for kids. Do not forget that. Even if it's something that is shared with a guest room, um, your kids are the ones that are using it most often. So make it fun. Think about bright colors, um, big, beautiful art. Uh, maybe it's fun lights. Uh, the shower curtain can be fun. The paint color. Um, I know Virginia Tile has this new product that is like this matte uh, tile that is really bold colors. And I would love to use it on a kid's bathroom. So if you have one that you are thinking that you want to hire a designer for, oh, pick me. I would love to use this tile in a kid's bathroom. I will link. I did a tour of them uh, back when it was still a little colder, but I'll try to get that up in my story today so you can see all the new products that they have as well. But think about from the tile to the color on the walls, to the art, to the lights. How can it be fun for your kids? This is a space that they're waking up to starting their day with. So try to make it fun. This is where bath time happens. This is where giggles happen. Uh, learn, just try to really update it to be fun for them. Um, and then it can also be inspiring while you're making it fun. Think about the mirror in their bathroom. What can you add to it that really can start off their day really well? For us, we have a different value each month. 
and we have what the value means, a Bible verse uh, that pulls out that value, and um, different things to think about as we go out through our day. And I laminated that one for each month, and it goes right up on their mirror in the corner. So every morning, they're waking up to understand what is the value that we treasure in this family, and what does it mean, and what does the Bible call out about it. That's one way we do it. Another easy way is to put post-it notes of affirmations on their mirror, or even just add a dry erase marker right next to that mirror. My daughter loves to leave affirming messages for her sisters, and uh, it just brings so much light to their day, and we automatically do our affirmations every morning, but this way they can do them themselves, and they can start to understand, like, if I affirm and send my day on a, on a positive note or start my day on a positive note, it just goes so much better. So what can you add? We also do these mindful cards. They're just off of Amazon. You can lift them up. It's fun. We pull up a mindful card every week and we put them throughout the house to remind us. So the one we pulled out yesterday um, was doing a body scan. So a perfect one to add to their bathroom. We just set it next to the mirror. Then when they're brushing their teeth, they can, hey, I should do a body scan. How is my body feeling? And it's really just starting their day in a more inspiring and fun way. So think about how you can use the mirror differently because they're in there all the time. The second tip I have is making sure that it is a place that is easy to clean because it gets messy very easily. And what are some of those tips that help with the cleanliness of a kid's bathroom? One of them is the same as the, as the master bath, right? Look at the toilet, making sure that it doesn't have a lot of grooves, that the lid can maybe come off easily, and you can clean it in a really easy way. Even putting, you know, Clorox wipes or you know, an antibacterial wipe in the bathroom so that the kids can easily grab it if they're old enough. And they can even do it themselves if you teach them. I do this for my our sinks because a lot of toothpaste ends up there. They know where those wipes are and they can easily wipe it down if they make a mess. And it's teaching your kids how to clean early. If you have boys, I am told that having tile on the back wall and on the sides and all around the toilet is a really good idea. I have four girls, so I don't quite know what that means. Um, I have an idea, but... Adding tile around your toilet is a good way to help keep it easily cleaned. Um, and then other things to help clean up um, is having you, so many times, right, towels are on the floor. So if you have hooks for your towels, kids can automatically put towels on hooks. It's a lot easier than if you have a rod. Or what we do is in our linen closet, we have um, just a little hamper inside there and anytime they're done with their towels they can just throw them in this hamper and I take it once a week to get cleaned and it's a easy way for them to put away their towels that's not very hard um, some other cleaning tips um, shower sprayer so we have this actually in both all of our showers is our shower head is not only a head but it also comes off into a sprayer and it makes it so much more easy to clean. And when you're doing bath time, it's easy to wash off the soap. So thinking about adding a bath sprayer, we just picked one up, I think from Home Depot or something for the kids' bathroom. And then when it comes to the tile on the floor, you know, you don't necessarily need a tile. We have laminate flooring, um, just because it's easy with kids and um, it's a high traffic area that we just want it to be all seamless and easy. Uh, they like to spill things like nail polish on it and it's something that can be wiped away clean. Um, but if you have tile, think about doing the darker grout, the darker floors, or like I said, that fun matte bold color tile from Virginia Tile uh, as a backsplash or even on your floor would be really fun. And then, the other tip is creating more independence into your bathroom. One way we do this is we have our toilet and our shower in a separate space. It's then the sinks and it's separated by a pocket door. 
That way, you know, a, a daughter can be taking a shower and then separately giving her her privacy separately two of her sisters can be getting ready we have um, vanities on two different walls so separate vanities but we have two of them so really three out of the four of our girls can get ready and it is a win-win for everybody um, so i recommend just trying to make kind of zones that can be separated out that people can have their space they can have their privacy as well, but multiple people can use the bathroom without making it feel too crowded. Um, and that really creates a lot of independence because they don't have to necessarily wait on you telling them, hey, did you brush your teeth? Did you brush your teeth? No, I can't fit into the bathroom. And you kind of have to constantly remind them. They're able to go in independently because there's a free space. And then if you have their checklist, even on the mirror, in pictures for the younger kids is um, a great addition as well. And then another independence tip for the toilet paper. We have shown our girls where the toilet paper is and then instead of the, um, the rod that you push in to change out the toilet paper, we just have the hook and the kids are easy, or can easily take off the toilet paper and then put it back on. Um, and that has been great for independence. Another idea is, you know, making sure you have your step stool in place for the littles that maybe can't reach so that you don't have to lift them up. But even better than that, if you know you're going to have littles in your house for quite a while. So if you know that if you're going to have someone under, I would say five or seven even for more than... You know, 10 to 15 years, I would even consider making one of your vanities at a lower kids level and not having the step stool. A lot of times kids will fall off of the step stool and hurt themselves, but if you just lowered a sink that they could easily walk up to, you're going to have that bathroom for enough years that by the time they can reach the taller sink, you're going to be likely redoing the bathroom anyway or at least updating it and you can get a new vanity then. So I recommend if you do know you're going to have littles in your house for 10 to 15 years, you know, under, let's say, the 5 to 7 range, think about lowering that vanity for them. It'll be a lot easier and they'll be able to do a lot more things independently. Um, and then, let's see, other things is, I think that is actually all I have. So... Oh, uh, for a step stool too, if you don't want to buy one, having it pull out from the bottom of your vanity is another easy way to do that. Um, it's a lot lower profile. But those are kind of the, the tips I have, the top tips, right? So make it fun, make it inspiring, make it affirming is the first one. Creating systems so that it can be easily cleaned, even by your kids, teaching them early and having systems in place so that they can take care of their own things and then really create that independence. You know, making sure that they can freely go into the bathroom and do the things they need to do and clean it the way it needs to be cleaned. And then when you go in, it's a lot more like a breath of fresh air. You're not worried. Yes, kids of three may not be cleaning yet, but if you can just quick grab a wipe that you already have stored in there and wipe down a sink or wipe down a toilet while they're having splash time in the bathtub real quick, a little bit extra time, think about doing that and you'll start loving your kid's bathroom again. So those are my top tips. I am so excited that you are here able to watch um, I have been getting a message that the my internet might be low, so I might have to re-record this. But if that happens, you guys won't know either way. It'll just be posted as a new video once I get that done. But your action step is to take a look at your kid's bath. How can you make it more fun, more inspiring? Maybe you create a system for easier cleaning for your kids. Whatever it is, just take one small step forward in your kids bathroom even ask your kids what they think would be easier and have them implement it because it gives them more connection to their own space so think about those things tomorrow we are going to go over the office 
and I am kind of a nerd about this. I love talking about offices and ergonomics and how important they are. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to talk about this subject and give you guys some behind the scenes engineering tips for your home office. And tomorrow I will actually be recording. I'm going to be going on another vendor tour to learn all about the latest in home electronics from Beacons. So I will be recording. I will get the video up so that you guys won't miss it. And please share this with any other mamas that you think would love this or be inspired by it. And share your favorite tip below in the comments of how, what you like to do in your own kids' bathrooms because we would all love to hear. And as always, please invite friends, share with friends. We're always trying to grow our community so that we can create our own Luca Havens. And I just appreciate you all for being here and I will get the recording up for tomorrow and I will see you again on Friday. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. And don't forget to send me those recommendations for ice cream. That's very important. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.